In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a biped and make it walk so we can add some workers into our factory work cell. So first what we're going to do is go up to the Create tab, and then go all the way to the right where it says Systems and click that. And then where it says Biped, we're going to click that, and then we're going to click and drag to create our biped. In the lower right, you'll see there's a place where it says Height. Now I have my unit set up where each unit is set to one inch. So I'm going to make this guy maybe five foot nine. If you don't know what your units are, you can go to Customize and Unit Setup, and then click System Unit Setup and change your units there. So now we have this biped skeleton that's going to make it really easy for us to do some human animation. So up in the right, let's go to the Motion tab. Now you can select any piece of the biped, doesn't really matter. Underneath the biped dropout, there's two little shoes that say footstep mode. There's some other options in here, but for now, let's just work with the footstep mode. So if we go ahead and click that, down where it says footstep creations, there's a button that says create multiple footsteps. So then we get this pop-out window where we can change a bunch of things, but mostly we can just add how many footsteps we want. So I'm going to do 20 for now. And then the other one I like to use is time to next footstep. This will just make him take a little extra time between each step. So let's hit OK and if you zoom out you can see there's these little footprints on the ground. That's the path he's going to walk. Now each of these footprints we can actually move separately. We can move them and rotate them. So what we can do if we select a bunch of these is rotate them together and actually make this path zigzag. So let's rotate this starting from footstep 8. You can go into the high view to see this better. I'm just going to move this a little closer to make the turn seem a little tighter. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to make our biped stop and pause and then keep walking again. So I'm going to take these next footsteps, starting with 12, and just move this right next to 11. I'm going to do the same thing with the last footstep. So now that we have those, we're going to have to adjust the keys so that the biped pauses properly. The only way for us to do that is to use what's called the dope sheet, which is found in the graph editor under track view dope sheet. This essentially is just a graphical view of all of the different keyframes and sort of like our master key. So let's go down where it says BIP001 footsteps and then select transform. And if we scroll down, we can see all of the different keyframes for our walk cycle. Each footprint is numbered and corresponds to the one in the viewport, the blue ones being the left foot and the green ones are the right foot. So these gaps here in between the keyframes are the time when the foot comes off the ground and moves to the next footstep. So if we go ahead and reposition this, we can see our dope sheet and all of our footprints at the same time. So what we're going to do now is work with footprints 11 and 12. So first, Select the keyframe at the beginning of 12, and you should see a little white dot line up. Then holding the shift key, we're going to drag this over until it's lined up with the end of the footprint 11 box. This is just going to make the timing look more natural when our biped pauses. Next what we're going to do is select footprints 11 through 19, which is the rest of the footprints. You'll see all these little keyframes light up with little white circles. Now hold down the Alt key and deselect the first frames from footprint 11 and footprint 12. That'll leave those stationary when we click and drag the rest of these. So what this is doing is just increasing the time that our biped remains stationary at these footprints. 
So now we're going to do the same exact thing with our last two footprints. So our biped pauses at the end. So holding the control key, select the last two frames for footprint 18 and 19. Then drag them down to increase the waiting time. So once that's done, we can just close out of this. And if we just reposition our scene so we can see everything. The last thing we need to do is make these footsteps active keyframes. Over to the right there's a key that says create keys for inactive footsteps. So when we click that, these will now be linked to our biped. So if we play our motion, it should do exactly what we want it to. So you notice he stops and waits and then keeps going. And at the end, he'll stop and wait again. Now also what we can do is keyframe the different parts of our biped like we would other objects. So we can make this guy do some other stuff. So I'm just going to stop right here in the middle and if you click a part you'll see there's some keyframes there. So that's the position keyframes that's controlling this motion. So now to change these keyframes we actually have to be in auto key mode this time. Set key won't work for this. So once we go into auto key, we can actually just rotate these. And sometimes they're a little weird. This one seems like that should be the right axis, uh, but instead it's the blue one. <laughs> so once we get this where we want, that'll already set an auto key for us. And we can do that to the other one too. So if you replay this motion, you'll see that this motion happens between the other two keyframes. So if we want his arms extended for a long period of time, we can select both of the arms. And then once they're selected, we can hold the shift key down to make a copy of our keyframe and then just copy that onto the other keyframes and that'll replace those. We also could have just deleted the extra keyframes, but I'm not sure if there's any other data stored in there, so I just want to be careful. So that's a real quick way if you want to say pick up a box and move it or something. So now I see his arms are out for a longer period of time. And you can control all of the body parts this way. So now I'm going to show you how to drop a character into our scene. So first let's start with the same work cell we've been working with and open that up. You might get a dialog box every now and then that asks you about the units of your file. Normally for the scene what I like to do is pick the selection that says adopt the files unit system. That seems to work out the best. Sometimes what you'll find is parts will fly all over the place. So if that happens, just close your file without saving it and try using the other setting. So anyway, let's go up and go to import and then select merge. And now what we're going to do is navigate to one of the characters we gave you. So first we have Steve, which is a robot I created. So you can pick him or we have this other human character. So just select all and hit OK. And that's going to drop him right in the center of this screen. So before anything gets deselected, we can just drag and drop him and reposition this guy. So all this is is a mesh that looks like the skin and all the clothing on top of the biped um, like we just created. So this guy works the same way. Uh, his biped actually looks like squares. So all these squares are the little biped pieces. So once you select a piece over on the right, you'll have a little name. So anything that says BIP is part of a biped. So now if we select any part of this guy's biped, we can go into the motion tab and do the same exact footprint setup that we did before. So we can just add in some footprints here. So in a really short amount of time without doing anything fancy, we have this guy walking through our work cell.